Good morning. As you can hear, we've got a really yappy dog down here today. And it's really early on a Sunday morning, so I'm sure the neighbours are really happy about it. Unfortunately, it will keep going like that most of the day. So I'm going to try and do a little bit of filming in between. I've come down today because it's a little bit cooler. It's quite overcast and we're actually forecast quite heavy rain for this afternoon. But I need to deal with this. Really, really being had by the black fly and the aphids. Now, we have been spraying down with water. We were using garlic water before the aphids turned up and during and soapy water too. Um, we've tried all manner of things. We picked the top off, but we had exactly the same as what we had last year, which was very underdeveloped beans and the plants have been pretty much decimated. Now there's pretty much no saving this particular plant. The beans that are growing are so deformed that it's just not worth wasting growing space for these. Now I do have some that's growing a little bit smaller, a different variety that's absolutely fine. A little bit of aphid, but nothing that bad. Now it's funny, last year we had thousands of ladybirds on the broad bean plants which helped somewhat with the amount of black fly that we actually had. This year I found none. Now we don't use chemicals or pesticides or anything else and I wouldn't be spraying the plant down with a hose if I saw any ladybird nymphs or anything like that. There's been absolutely nothing this year of the ladybirds. So going from last year where we literally had thousands everywhere to this year, well none on here. It's a little bit strange this year. So what I'm going to do today is actually get rid of all this. This will actually give me a little bit more space because I've got plenty of other plants that can go into the ground. And I think we'll be clearing some space in other beds today as well. Some of the lettuces have bolted, which is fine. We use them as a slug deterrent against some of the other crops. But as you've seen in my community post, some of the lettuces have got absolutely huge. So I'm not going to be short of lettuces for the next couple of weeks at least. But I need to deal with this. Now, this, all of this, the whole thing will just go on the compost bin. Our compost bins run so hot that any bean pods or anything like that will pretty much fail to develop. And if they do, well, they can just be pulled out and then literally thrown back onto the compost bin. It's great green manure for this time of year because it's been so dry we haven't had as much grass clippings for our compost bins over the last three, four weeks because the grass isn't growing, because we haven't had much water and the gardeners haven't been mowing the lawns. So this kind of thing, when we're taking plants out that have finished their harvest, is a great addition to your compost bins. Hopefully I can post edit that yapping dog out. Anyway, so I'm not actually going to move the soil or anything like that at the moment. I'm just going to focus on getting the main stems out. Because this is a no-dig bed, I want to disturb the soil as least as possible. And in fact, you can keep the roots in. I want to disturb the soil as least as possible because this is a no-dig bed. So I'll cut the stems down to as low as I can reach at the moment and then I'll probably just leave the roots in. This will add extra nutrients to the soil. As you can see with this, it's absolutely infested. In fact, I think this is worse than last year. And it is a mixture of white fly and black fly, so lots of different types of aphids on here. And no ladybird larvae. So let's clear this up because the stuff is so sticky on the hands, it's really not pleasant to handle. Now there's no saving these beans. They're not gonna to grow to their full potential. The amount of sap and aphid juice on these, it's really disgusting. Now this really will be a welcome benefit to the compost pile. Plants finish. <laughs> and plants finish. You wanna try and clear the ground. unless it's something you want to actually grow for seed. 
then it's more opportunity to grow a different range of plants. Maybe not this particular variety, because this variety does seem to get hit really, really hard. So I'm just going to crack on with this, and I'll get back to you in a minute. Well, that's that bed cleared. I'm going to leave the other broad beans in because they're actually not that bad. But first I've got to get rid of all this broad beans into the compost bin. Now in general, when it's this thick, it really does need to be chopped down. But I actually haven't got my shears. Well, I do, but they've actually rusted shut. So I need to pick up a new pair of shears because I'm, it was a cheap pair anyway. I'm going to invest in something half decent just so it will help me chop down all this bigger material that we'll get over the summer months for the compost bin. There's actually quite a lot of uh, foliage here, but once it's chopped down, oh, this black fly is awful stuff to have on your hands. Once it's chopped down, it will start decomposing really quick. Now these stems are quite fleshy, but some of them are a little bit more woodier. So you've got a little bit of a mixture of both green and brown on this. Now that's a little area that I can carry on sowing now. Just got to get rid of some more of the little bindweed, which it's more prevalent this year, but it's also a lot weaker than it was when we first came here. So I think the covering with cardboard and things is actually starting to work. You've just got to keep on top of it and it is coming through the paths as well which is understandable because the cardboard would have rotted away by now and it's just the wood chip that's actually on top of the surface but if you keep at it just literally little and often eventually it will weaken it's impossible for something to grow if you're removing the part that it needs to grow now the weeds, the roots can stay in the ground, but without those leaves giving it the energy from the sun, eventually it just gets weaker and weaker and weaker. So by removing those leaves, keeping on top of it, eventually over time, might not be the first year, the second year, sometimes not even the third, but eventually you'll find that it actually doesn't come back. So just keep at it, little and often. I think in this bed, before I plant anything else into it, I will give it a really really good watering now just below the surface it's actually quite moist but the top the top inch or so is just bone dry now these broad beans were getting watered quite a lot but with this dry spell at the moment it's just been quite hard to keep the moisture in the grounds now the no dig beds have actually stayed much better for moisture retention than the normal soil just literally less than an inch down into the ground it's, it's stayed quite moist. So I think I'm gonna put some carrots into this bed. Now, the one bathtub we grew with our carrots was definitely a failure. Now, whether it was in the sand we added, whether it was in the soil, or whatever the case it was, the other bathtub has flourished and it's done exceptionally well. But the one bathtub, nope nothing now I think it was four maybe even five separate sowings and out of all those we've got literally probably about six or seven carrots that have germinated now this pretty much the same seeds were sown in both tubs so we know that there's something definitely wrong with that particular bathtub so we're going to rethink that soil in there last year I grew carrots in the ground and didn't have any issues whatsoever and they were the most beautiful tasting carrots so much better than what you can buy in a supermarket I know you've heard it all before but it really is true it they because they're not being stored and then sat on a shelf for ages and things like that having them straight from your allotment they are so sweet and a lot more water content in them as well so I'm actually going to grow some carrots in this down the middle 
and see if I can have an actual good success rate as I did last year straight into my ground. So just remember as our crops finish or disease or pest issues strike that particular crop make sure that you're clearing the ground there is still loads of time left to be growing things and if you've started sowing and you've been continuously sowing through the whole month of May and June you'll have things that will be able to go into that space but don't worry if you've actually not got anything to go into these gaps you can always buy plug plants from your local garden centre or DIY store depending where you are yes it's not necessarily cost effective but if you're new to growing this way actually really does help you grow and actually have some success instead of maybe struggling with growing some seeds okay i think i need to go and harvest my peas i'll see you in the next video